This really breaks my heart because if I ever hear anyone tell me that mental health can't kill you, what about suicide? Broken heart syndrome. Anxiety induced asthma attacks. White coat syndrome. Heart attacks. Hi, I'm Dr. Kave, and so many of my patients suffer from anxiety and depression, but many just normalize their suffering. They accept it as part of life. A little anxiety can be healthy and life-saving in certain circumstances, but my patients simply don't know the years of life and health that are lost from unmanaged chronic mental health disease, especially anxiety. And this is so misunderstood that a reporter once wanted me to write an article for them titled, No Joke, Why Anxiety Can't Kill You. So I'm going to break that narrative with you today and share three very physical effects that anxiety can have on your body, inside and outside the operating room, that can shave off years of your life and health. Number one is the broken heart syndrome. Yeah, it's actually a real thing. I've seen it myself a handful of times inside and outside the operating room. It happens when there's a huge sympathetic nervous system response to massive physical or psychological tragedy. The medical name for it is Takasubo cardiomyopathy. It comes from the Japanese name for octopus traps because octopus traps can be round and oval shaped and that's what your heart looks like when you develop the broken heart syndrome. It can lead to heart failure and in some rare cases even death. The good news is that it's not super common. It's highly, highly unlikely to happen from a minor anxiety provoking event. But in certain patients, in unfortunate circumstances, it absolutely can affect your heart, leading to heart failure, heart attacks, and even death. The good news is that many patients can recover from Takasubo cardiomyopathy and live their lives normally if their heart fully recovers. Number two is cardiovascular disease. You've probably all heard of patients running on treadmills while the doctor doctor monitors their heart, but did you know that a more sensitive test to check your heart's health is to actually have somebody give a speech or throw them in an anxiety provoking situation and then monitor their heart. It's because that stress response that grips your whole body also stresses your heart out. So a mental health stress test can be just as effective, if not more effective, at predicting heart attacks than an exercise stress test like the one on the treadmills. While the anxiety inducing event for that stress test won't kill you, if it happens long term throughout your life, it is gonna stress your heart out and set you up for long term cardiovascular disease like heart attacks. Another powerful example is the white coat syndrome. Have you ever been to the doctor's office and they measure your blood pressure and while it's normal at home, in the doctor's office it shoots through the roof and it makes you look like you have totally uncontrolled blood pressure. And you're sitting there being like, no, it's not always this high, it's just because I'm stressed out right now because maybe I ran up the stairs or I'm just anxious because this blood pressure cuff is really tight around my arm. Whatever the reason, white coat hypertension is a very, very real phenomena that you've probably heard of before. And it demonstrates just how powerful an effect your mind and mindset has over the rest of your body. It's because when you stress out, your blood vessels constrict and that increases your blood pressure. It's also what causes the heart attacks in those mental stress tests that I was talking about earlier. And to make matters worse, when patients have concomitant depression with their anxiety, they're more likely to have poor dietary choices. And unhealthy foods can fuel atherosclerosis, which can lead to coronary heart disease or cerebrovascular disease, all fancy ways of saying that they can trigger heart attacks and strokes. Once again, the good news is that getting your mental health under control can help reverse your sympathetic nervous system's overdrive and help balance it with parasympathetic tone. Another medical way of saying that you can restore balance neurologically to your body and your heart attack and stroke risks can also be normalized after you address the mental health. Number 2.5, just because we're on the topic of heart health and mental health, did you know that anxiety can trigger asthma attacks? While anxiety-induced asthma attacks are unlikely to kill anyone, if you have underlying heart or lung disease, it might tip you over the edge and make a situation more dangerous. And finally, number three. This is the most serious and the most heartbreaking and that's substance use and suicide. This really breaks my heart because if I ever hear anyone tell me that mental health can't kill you, what about suicide? One of the most preventable and just absolutely heartbreaking ways to die from a mental health condition, totally unacceptable and something that should never ever be normalized, nor should the substance abuse that often coincides with suicide. Just look at the opioid epidemic. More young people will die from the opioid epidemic than will ever die from the pandemic. And it's not just opioids. 
opioids, look at alcohol abuse, and even cannabis use disorder. I know with weed it can be controversial because cannabis can have some health benefits, no question on that. But the high concentration of THC products, like with 30 plus percent THC, like that Anastasia strain of cannabis, is simply not the same as the 2% THC concentration weed that was used for thousands and thousands of years before modern techniques. And in the operating room, we can totally see the physical effects of opioid use, alcohol use, and yes, even cannabis use because of the very real effects they have on the body. The body literally opens up like a book when patients have these substances in their body or even if they use them days or weeks ago, especially in the case of weed because it's so fat soluble, it hangs around the body for up to a month if you've been using it every day prior. So the physical effects of mental health conditions like anxiety and depression and the substances that people use to self-medicate or the pharmaceutical medications they use are totally real, especially here in the operating room when we can tell off the monitors what's been going on in your body. And we sometimes even need to adjust our anesthesia for your safety to make sure that you wake up at the end of surgery. So enough gaslighting about chronic pain and anxiety and mental health because we see their real physical effects here in surgery. Instead, let's look at the flip side. A compassionate doctor supporting you through a traumatic time of life like surgery, along with some psychedelic effects of anesthesia, can help break the vicious cycle of suffering and anxiety. And of course, this can be done without medications or psychedelics. In some cases though, it might help accelerate years of self-work and self-reflection to help overcome mental health struggles. Personally, I use the natural route, but I recognize that there is a time and place for other medications as well. So please don't sell yourself short and resort to living with debilitating mental health conditions. When the time is right and you're ready, you can leave your comfort zone to discover your incredible potential to overcome mental health conditions, especially anxiety. Breaking anxiety and suffering habit loops can take time, but the payoff of discovering your inner beauty and potential is greater than my patients ever dream it can be.